I was still leading the show, Don, I would have made that game time. <laughs> he, he, the, 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 the things that he sponsored, Michael, were just fascinating. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. You Mike. know what? As long as the sponsors didn't complain. Right. As long as you get the sponsor in. All right, what do you got? So the Yankees sweep the Twins. And listen, I like the Twins organization. I like Rocco Baldelli. Uh, I love their stadium. I love Minneapolis. It's a wonderful, wonderful city. But it's it's laughable that they can't beat the Yankees. It, it's laughable. So they have played, I believe, 153 games, including the postseason, over the last um, 20 years. 153 games. And the Yankees have won... 114 games. So if you extrapolate that winning percentage over the last nine games remaining, it would be 162 games. The Yankee team would set an all-time record and win 120 games if they played a 162-game season against the Twins. Now, what makes it all the more maddening to me, the Twins aren't bad. So they've met them in the playoffs 18 games since 2002 the yankees have won 16 of them crazy it makes no sense it doesn't make any sense peter and this is a team that came into new york having to win their only way to get into the postseason is to win the central because there will not be a wild card out of the central it's a terrible division terrible so it's either the white Sox, the guardians or the twins and the twins have come in and thrown up all over their spikes now, you can say, well, the Yankees are a good team, too. No, I can't. Not right now. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you the starting lineup for the first game. The right Probably. fielder, Oswaldo Cabrera, let off. Then okay. it's Aaron Judge, who's great. He's the DH. Gleyber Torres, who's having an awful um, second half of the season, the <laughs> second baseman. Ronald Guzman who had the, the last time he appeared in the major leagues was 707 days ago. He was a cleanup hitter. Then you go to Miguel Andujar, who was called up to be the 29th guy that you can add to the roster if you have a doubleheader. Then Isaiah Conifalefa. Then Estevan Florial, coming in one hit and 20 at-bats in the big leagues this year. Then Kyle Higashioka, coming in with a 193 batting average. And then Oswald Peraza, who in his short major league career, 0 for 7 and hit by mm. pitch. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want to be flippant here because that's not my way. If Aaron Boone made that lineup up in spring training when the Yankees were going to Lakeland, you know what would happen? The Yankees would be fined for not putting a representative team on the field. That's not even a joke. You have to have five legitimate big leaguers in your spring training lineup when you go on the road. Otherwise, you're going to get fined. That's not a legitimate major league lineup. I don't know how the Yankees won these two games. So if you want to get giddy and you want to get happy and go, well, the Yankees have certainly righted the ship. Uh, they've won four in a row, and tonight they could win five in a row and sweep this uh, four-game series with the Twins. You run this lineup out this weekend against Tampa Bay, you're going to be hard-pressed to win one game. You are. Now, I know, I know exactly what Don's going to say, because I know Don like I know myself. <laughs> well, the Yankees have always had these issues, and it's the next man up, and they, they thrive. Well, that's how I sound? No, no, that's I, how I, I hear you. I know uh, you sound different. Unfortunate. <laughs> that's how I hear you in my head. <laughs> that's not good. No, it's not, but that's how I do hear you. Okay. They're not going to be able to take two out of three from the If you take two out of three from the Rays this weekend, you could put together the failure or the possible failure and losing the American League East. I think you take two out of three, you kind of put them to sleep because they have a really tough schedule after this. Nine games against Toronto, six games against Houston, three games against the Guardians. That is some heavy lifting. And the Yankees have a really easy schedule. But nothing is easy for the Yankees when you run out this sort of lineup. It's just not. And they ran out a similar lineup in the second game. And tell me what's going to get better real soon. Anthony Rizzo can't get out of bed because of headaches caused by the epidural. So he's put on the I.L. They're considering putting D.J. LeMayu on the I.L. They had two or three pinch-hitting opportunities in game one. Stanton never moved off the bench, so he's not able to play, at least for a while. Still no I.L. for him. They just had surgery to remove the hamate bone from Andrew Benintendi. 
Josh Donaldson has left the team with paternity leave, but he could be back any day, so that's not long-term. But I mean, before yesterday, Aaron Hicks had not had an extra base hit in a month and a half. Lordy. And Glaber Torres had the lowest OPS of any player in the American League that had over 90 at-bats since the All-Star break. So, I mean, that's what we're looking at. They're playing Ronald Guzman at first base. So you tell me how that team is going to beat a team like Tampa Bay. Now, Tampa Bay's banged up, too, but somehow they've worked through it. Maybe they get back Juan DeFranco. I'm not sure. And pitching does win games. And Garrett Cole was great in the second game. 14 strikeouts, two walks. He got the win. They got exactly what they needed from him, six and two-third innings. And then, magically, they won the first game in 12 innings. But I don't think that this is sustainable unless you get back your regular players, guys. I just don't. But you will at some point in time for the playoffs and that's when you're gonna have to answer all of your questions because they did beat the twins and they'll beat the twins again tonight michael that's what they do that's what they get paid to do is beat the twins for whatever reason i don't get it twins are a pretty good team but they just fold up shop against the yankees it's embarrassing that that lineup was still able to beat them the the, the twins but uh, come on michael the yankees couldn't buy a hit late in that game until no. they needed to and then they got it because that's what the twins do they, get, they take the 4-3 lead, they immediately give it up for a team that couldn't score otherwise for most of the game, you know, unless it was a home run. So they'll get Stanton back, they'll get Rizzo back, and those three are this modern-day version of Murderer's Row, what, they, what they've been able to produce offensively. They'll get LeMayhew back, and I think they'll be fine. The question is, in the meantime, would they squander this five-game lead over the Rays? Get swept this weekend, Michael, then, then you're going to be sweating. Well, yeah, it's one game in the loss column. And then you got three in Toronto at the end of the month. They're still lurking, six back in the loss column. Now they've lost a couple in a row, so Toronto's not, but they still have won eight of their last ten. So you got a couple of teams kind of breathing down your neck, but it's not like the Yankees have to, you know, worry the way the Mets have to worry, where it feels like they have to win every single night. They've got a little cushion here. I think you even said that this is still enough of a lead to hold on to for the rest of the year. If you get all these guys back, then you should be whole for the playoffs, and then we'll see. But, Don, what are you drinking to think they're going to get these guys back? I mean, it looks like a chronic toe issue with LeMayu where they're, like, torn. Is a rest going to help or not? And the guy didn't have an extra base hit for 21 straight games as he was playing through pain. Right. Rizzo, you have no idea what's happening. When headaches happen after an epidur epidural, you get a little nervous, and... You know, Giancarlo Stanton didn't have an extra base hit since coming off the I.L., and then when you go before he went on the I.L., he also didn't produce. The only thing that you could lean on is history because if he's quasi-healthy, he does dominate in the postseason. But, I mean, right. are we sure those guys are coming back? Well, I, I think Ben Benintendi will be back for the postseason. Wow. See, that's the one I would bet would not. You really? I mean, that's, that's a, everybody's say, saying, well, you know what, you come back from a handmade injury quickly. Well, let's see. And then that means he can't swing a bat, Don, for three or four weeks. So what, what player are you getting back? Now, they could, should get Bader back, you would think. We'll, we'll talk to Boone at four, so that could help. But I think, listen, you're, you're definitely painting a, a picture of a glass half empty. But I, I think Rizzo can come back from this. I hope he can. The problem is the glass has looked that way for a you pretty know. long time. Uh, if Stanton is able to get some rest here, I think he can get back. And you know how he's raked the last couple of years in the playoffs. Yep. So I, I can look at a glass half full. You can look at a glass half empty. But somewhere in the middle is probably a, a very curious way to go about the rest of the season with these guys being hurt. But I know you said it with a funny voice, but history has shown that the Yankees do seem to respond when they've got a bunch of injuries. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we discover players you know, like the um, Andujars of the world and the um, uh, the Gio Urshillas of the world and the Fords of the world, like guys that come out of nowhere and start it. Now, we don't know if any of these guys are going to do it, and certainly Guzman and Gonzalez and, and certain guys that have played have not showed you the ability to do that yet, but it still could happen, and we'll find out tonight. We'll find out this weekend. I'm not ready to just say they're in that much trouble because of these injuries. They've won four in a row. It can't all just be because they've got some wizardry over the Twins. 
that they won these games. And we'll see what they do tonight and against the Rays. But there is a world in which this season ends with a quick playoff performance for this team. And the thing that we talk about from this season is Aaron Judge. And part of that story, Michael, is can you believe the lineup he was doing it with? That's I'm glad you brought that up. And I think we saw what the what the world is going to be moving forward uh, if you're a team and you do not pitch around this guy you, you deserve to lose so he's intentionally walked twice in uh what was that the second game uh, you know in the first game and then he was intentionally walked once in the um in the second game so he and pete alonzo have both been intentionally walked 14 times and that leads major league baseball now, Pete Alonso has more protection in the order than, than Judge. Now, Judge, when you've got Rizzo behind you and, and a healthy and stout Stanton, they're not going to intentionally walk you. They're not. And if he breaks this record with this lineup in, in September, it's it's otherworldly it's, what he's doing. Well, let, let's be honest, Michael. It, it will be the reason he doesn't break is because of this lineup. That, that, that there's going to be multiple times where they're just not going to pitch to him. Well, here's the thing that, that you could fall back on, though, Don. The Yankees have a really easy schedule the rest of the way, and the teams that they're playing are not in contention. So, I mean, would a manager really end up walking a guy? Like, remember Derek Jeter's last hit at Yankee Stadium? The Orioles had nothing to play for that game. Otherwise, Derek Jeter would have walked in that situation. So I think a lot of teams might challenge well, him, and that might offset when he gets pitched around well, in a game against the Twins where they really need it. Oh well, well, let's look at it, okay? Well, obviously the Rays need it this weekend. Yep. Twins need it tonight. And then you have two against the Red Sox. All right, the Red Sox are not going to want to give up home runs to Aaron Judge. And it's gonna, and it's a little too early that they he'd be breaking the record next week. Right. All right. Then three games in Milwaukee. The Brewers need that. They're they're trying. Uh, they're, they're pretty much falling apart, but they're still mathematically alive. They're going to need the games. Now the Pirates. That, that that's a chance. Again, I don't think the Red Sox want to give up the record for that four games at the stadium. Mm -hmm. Blue Jays are going to need the games, yep. and the Orioles may need the games. Good so point. even though it's easy, I think these games outside of the Pittsburgh games, Michael. Because of the rivalry with Boston, uh, most, if not all, of these games are going to be the, going up against opposition that's going to want to play legit, going to want to win the game, and probably not want to give up the record. But you know what might help them out? The four rescheduled games at the end of the year, Texas is playing for nothing. That's in Arlington, and maybe they just go right at him. Who knows? But I think he's going to have 61 by then. I really do. It's, it's, only, it's only six away. It, I know. But, you know, listen, he's also been hot as a pistol to get to this mark. Right. Basically, homing homing almost every single day. You know, just the way it works is there'll be a four or five game stretch where he doesn't and it changes everything. But the way he's hitting right now, Michael, don't rule 73 out, for God's sakes. The guy, the guy, every time they pitch to him, he seems to hit a home run. Well, you see a home run in what, I guess, going into the second game of the doubleheader, what, four of the last five games? Six of the last ten as well. I mean, that's an incredible number. Now, were you surprised that he said yesterday he considers the record to be Bonds' record? Now, I don't, I'm not surprised. The record is Bonds' record. That is the record. I mean, what's he supposed to say? I mean, he grew up watching Barry Bonds play in the Bay Area. It is the record until Major League Baseball says it's not. That's the record. He's right now can aim at the American League record, and that's a legitimate record. But, for, you know, even Roger Maris' son was quoted, I'm surprised he said that a lot of people look at 61 as the legitimate record. No, the legitimate record is 73 in the record book. Now, it might not be in your mind, but I think Aaron Judge said the right thing. No, and maybe absolutely. he is going for 73. No, I think that would put a target on his back if he didn't. Uh, and listen, I know there's a lot of Yankee fans who think it's 61. There's a lot of older fans, but there's also a lot of younger fans who look at 73. And as you said, he grew up a Bonds fan. I don't think he wants to stir that controversy. That is technically Whoa. the record. They will not, Peter, celebrate him breaking Major League Baseball's record when he hits 62. No. But so you can still celebrate. You can no. celebrate that he broke the American League no, record. So course. there's going to be a celebration. But he's asked, is that the Major League record? And his, the only answer that I think is legitimate is to say no. It's I acknowledged agree. as 73. I agree. Also, he would sound so nuts if he says he considers the record 61. That means he considers himself the record holder when he gets it. It would look so weird. Yeah, it's kind of odd. And it's I don't, a heel move, and he's not a heel. No, he's, no not. he's not. He's done everything right, pitch perfect, and I think that saying that Bonds is the record holder, he is the record holder. And I think it bothers a lot of people, but he is. So unless somebody has a spine in Major League Baseball and takes the record away, well, that's all there is to it. That's the record. 
And it's hard to take the record away because there weren't rules in place back then. And the guys never tested positive. That's the record. Now, if you want to say, well, let's discount uh, um, McGuire because obviously uh, he admitted it and, and Sosa, everybody assumed Sosa did it. Okay, take those away. Still 73 is the record. Sorry, that's game time. Brought you by.